Hey YouTube, we are gonna do a uh, little box opening and a preview of another new tool that came in from these guys from Vivor. Uh, if you watched our last one on that jack, people oh, seem to really like it slow. and they liked it yeah. too. So we have a plasma cutter and I'm not the expert, but this guy is. So he's gonna play around with it too and let's get it open. I know some of you have noticed uh, Kevin and I starting to do videos together and we we're sharing uh, shop space here. This is actually his shop that he uh, he let me moved into by Side by Side Extreme and Custom Fabrication. But uh, when I told him about this, he kind of went, huh? Huh? Because we both are big Miller fans. Yeah. Uh, at least that's what I've used. I've used Lincoln and Miller a lot. And I mean, it's just hard to go wrong on either of those. Either but one, but I mean, this is When for... you see the price in this, we thought the only way you're going to know is to try it. That's it. I mean, so... that's it. That's what it comes down to. Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. We can figure out what this thing's made of. As we fumble around with this, you know it how to wrench. We just want to get to using the tools and, and uh, reviewing them. So we'll tell you this, the, the box was packaged very well. Had uh, really strong corners, felt pretty good about it. We could see where the box got poked through a couple times, but that was from uh, someone at the, at the shop next door that put something heavy on it. So... Uh, they did a good job and as you can see from the accessories here it comes loaded with everything you need we took this out of the box and literally just put it together the only thing not included in this list was a quick release coupler for our airline we just didn't want to have to hardwire it in uh, it does come with nipples if you're going to leave it in one spot but we want it to be portable but check out how long this torch is uh, automatic 120 240 uh, sensing this thing's going to be awesome Got a nice torch head on this thing. I like the little, uh, little guard keep you from guard, yeah. hitting that right on there. Let's see how long this thing is. Wow, you get a long torch here. Look at this. It's got to be six, 16 foot torch lead on this thing. Let's find out. Okay, 16.4. Yep. Huh? <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Six and a half foot ground clamp. Yep, so I'm pulling out right now. Uh, no, it came with the regulator? Yep, it does, right here. That's the rest out of that box, so you can get rid of that one. Shoot. Let's see what they give us for a regulator, see if it's. Nice little regulator. It's got a bleeder on it. It's got a nice little bracket to go with it. Or if it mounts on the back. Probably. The last one mounted. Yep, right here where the screws are. <laughs> Why ain't that handy? So that'll be nice. Let's show, let's show them. Yeah, there's a couple screws right here on the back of it where this regulator bracket goes on, and then okay. the regulator will go right on it. So you'll be on the back of it like this with your regulator for your air. That looks good. And then you've got a cord, and it's already got a, a 220 plug on the end of it. So this is great. Um, the, so adapter, in. the adapters actually go down Just from to go down. 220 to 110. So that's that's a good thing, because if you're going to try to cut half inch, you're going to need 220. It's not going to cut it on 110. Uh, yeah. So I what got, I don't know, and I kind of wonder we're going to need to look into, is on my Miller, the, it was auto-sensing. You didn't even flip a switch or anything. Yeah, look at this plug here real quick. And, of course, you're going to want to read the instructions and make sure that that's actually what it is. We haven't read anything. You guys are watching us right now doing this just like we are. Hey, speaking of the, the manual this thing comes with, it's actually quite impressive. Uh, I mean, it's not just the two pages of slap on a bracket and a hose, but... You're going to see where I make a little cheat sheet on the unit itself to convert this metric to PSI. But um, what I found was pretty cool about this, if you really aren't, uh, you know, very familiar with plasma cutting, there's actually some really good tips in here. But, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty standard for assembly. But as far as the machine operation, it gives you some really good um, tips in here. Let me get to that on, let's get to that. How to cut, you know, whether you go straight, go at an angle. Because remember, this is a non-contact torch to where you just as soon as you pull the trigger, it starts cutting, which is way cool. Uh, make your tips last longer too. But 
Then it goes into even tip size recommendations, you know, the height and so on. So I don't know, I, I found it pretty useful. It's a nice little training guide if you're not um, up to date or the best. And then obviously a little troubleshooting and some charts for uh, expected uh, amperages required to cut different materials and at different gauge thicknesses. So pretty cool. Good job. I think you did uh, hit it on the head there, Bebor. I'm going to speed up through assembly and just kind of zoom in on some areas because it's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, just four little screws attach these cable holders. I'll zoom in here so you can see that, but uh, let's move on to the connections at the front of the unit. Super transparency as always on the channel, but uh, I'll take the blame for this. Maybe I made this too tight. Maybe I didn't, but here's what happened. Check it out. All right, just want to be transparent on this and not have any... Uh, fast ones pulled here but when I was just this is just like a thumb screw tight and yeah. it literally just uh, loosened, up, loosened up on the inside so obviously that's not gonna be hard to do we're not plugged in I'm gonna be able to go in and uh, uh, tighten that back up but that might be something uh, to watch out for maybe I'm a little bit stronger than I think Kevin yeah. <laughs> all right we'll go back to fixing her up all right, to install the, the torch is pretty easy on here. The the main line that the, the air comes through goes uh, just threaded on a big knob. You use just your hand on that. And then the red line uh, fits onto that uh, little thumb screw, if you will, where you take the cap off, you put your eyelet on. The ring terminal is already on there. You don't have to crimp anything. And then uh, the, the last connector there, th uh, it, it's pinned in. There's three little prongs in there, as you'll see, and then you thread it on. Uh, just by hand once again and then ultimately the ground strap is just a friction fit where you push it in and give it like a half turn and it locks in place really nice for storage if you want to take that ground uh, strap off and store it underneath like in a cart or something it's pretty cool we got all the Some stuff barbs. hooked up on the front of this thing all your leads and everything hooked up in, in place your ground Try to make this go up your so torch it head. caught on a bench or something you know yep and then we're gonna have this will be your amperage to cut thicker materials so kevin's going ahead and putting the regulator that it comes with on the back here and then it like i said it comes with the line the clamps the nipples and everything the only thing we added like i said was that shop fitting there and uh, we wanted to make it a quick release there uh, the other thing i'll note is that the gauge is only a metric you're going to see here in a second what we did to uh to overcome that so what you're going to see is that the gauge that comes with is metric so if you had a bunch of like regulators around me with some busted up old valves or something you could just swap one out otherwise i'll put a link to amazon below but did a quick google search i'll put the link to that site as well below but average psis for plasma cutters are between 90 and 120 psi depending on the thickness of the material so that was the six to eight and a half on this regulator so once again i'll put all the links below make it easy for you you can search it to your heart's desire but those were some common ranges that we found what are we doing? We've got all the stuff on the back of this thing now. We're going to try to fire it up and see what it does. We've got little labels on here that we put on ourselves because trying to figure out PSI for yeah, CFMs, we've got all that stuff going on. So we put a regular fitting on here to just get our hose right up to it instead of having a, you know. Because it didn't come with this. It didn't just come came with that with, fitting. It so. came with two nipples. Okay. We've already got welders hooked up back here, so we're just going to plug this right into the 50 amp that my welder's plugged into. Do you want to throw that yeah, on top Set of this uh, right on top of the welder here? Turn it off, switch it in the back. Turn it off, see what it does. Look hey, hey, hey. So let me get the air hose hooked up here now. And you said you checked it already. That's our fitting leaking, not the machine. Right. Okay. That's my. Uh, oh, we got to set that gauge. I do. Set on set. Cool. I want to I want to run it through the pace. So 20 is reading 20, and what's uh, Max reading? 50 is reading 49.6. We'll just start with a piece of quarter inch. Let's do that. Then we know that we're good. Okay. Little something. Okay. There was a chart in that manual too that had recommendations. Right. Man, that is a nice long lead. Well, I tell you, that is. You almost wish the ground one were that long then. Right. It will um, be if I have it too long. It's been forever since I used this. Do you have to, because you don't want to cut through your ground cable. Right. 
So you're not really going to do that because I'm going to come back. You're going, going backwards. Through. You're going to drag it backwards. I'm coming yeah. this way. So this is not like an all-in-all -all video on how to plasma cut. I mean, there's different techniques with dragging right. and pulling and pushing and all that. Right now but... we're just going to see if this thing will cut through here. Okay. And see what it does. But, uh, yeah, I thought I saw it. You know, if you slow down a little bit, that thing will come right off of there. I almost wonder if we turned it down because maybe it was just too strong. I remember, like, sometimes you'd be going, you'd be going with too much amperage and then it would just, yeah. No, we were actually pretty good. Are we? But that's just, you know, cutting freehand really fast. Yeah. You know, if I get a straight edge out of there and just take it and cut it nice, that would be a, a great cut. Wow. All right, man. I, I just can't believe you're going for the thick right away, but... All right, let's go for the big dog. Do you want a different piece? That looks like a nice piece of strut. No, I'm just going to cut it right off the end here, so all right. be all right. Dang. I, I'm quite blown away. I did not think that that what, was... For such a small machine, I am just totally impressed. Of what this thing does. I'm trying to remember what it cost. It was a couple hundred bucks or something. Three hundred. Two hundred and thirty-five, I think, for retail. How can you? How can you even make it for that? Uh, all right, guys, we're going to cut some three-eighths inch steel here. And this is just a piece of plate that I had laying around. So I'm going to go ahead and bust it on this one. And uh, this is the heck of it. a straight edge on here. Let's see if I can cut a pretty decent piece with it. All right. Here we go. That was awesome that you just pulling the trigger. Steel. You just got to be careful what you're doing. Turn it up, and you're gonna have to slow flip down. That, flip the bottom. Let's see. Oh yeah. But uh, you know, it's cutting through it okay. Well, and it was we're only a forty. We're only a forty. So we crank that thing all the way up on 220 volts or 240 volts. That's uh, I think we'll cut through half. Let's. Uh, do you mind if we do a little? Let's crank it up and do a little yeah, video let's of it. Crank it up all the way and see what it does. Let's let you get reset up. And I'll, I'll show everybody in the manual the recommendations they have. But hold on here. We're going to go ahead and uh, crank this bad boy up. Rock it up, 49.9. And then uh, we're going to rock and roll. We'll just go across here again and see what we get. Oh, it's right there on the end, just at yeah. the very end. Damn. But that's full 3 8 cut right there. You got a ruler handy? Uh, yeah, I do. There you go. You can see that. That's a full 3 8 inch thick. Sweet. Well, that's pretty good. I'll tell you what. For as small as this thing is, I'm pretty impressed. Well, I know uh, we'll do some other videos. We'll do some like longer term stuff. But you know, Kevin, you had said, hey, man, I got a million uses. Let's yeah, let's, let's go for this." Uh, so uh, I've got some plate over there that I need to cut down. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, for as small as that unit is, that is very impressive. 
Awesome. Well, hey, I will have the link to get your own down below. Uh, like I said, if you haven't done so yet, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Keep getting content like this, and uh, we'll keep uh, doing product reviews, making good stuff, and having good uh, how-to tips. So, as always, my friends, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Make it a great day, and keep wrenching.